Pop Cult Parent is sponsored by Heroes for Hire, LLC. Turn your vision to reality with Heroes for Hire. Heroes for Hire helps bring budding social entrepreneurs turn their ideas for change into fully functional 501c3 nonprofit organizations. Heroes for Hire has helped over 50 nonprofit organizations create their bylaws, apply for tax exemption, recruit board members, and more. Heroes for Hire is the Pop Cult's founding sponsor, and we are so excited to be partnering with them. Learn more at heroesforhirellc.com. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, boys and girls, children of all ages, and and people, welcome to the Pop Cult Parent Holiday Special. Gather around the fire, get some eggnog, even though it's the nastiest drink ever made, and grab some cookies, and, and join us. For a holiday special. Uh, Eggnog is delicious. Oh, Please continue. Someone's on the naughty list. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Cult Parent. <laughs> we're uh, we're uh, the retrospective podcast. You know, we talk about what we we watched as uh, young men, and you know, we talk about sharing it with our kids. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Mark, aka Clyde M F Jones, and I'm joined here on this special holiday night. Guided star brought us together. The three kings. The other kings are here. Can y'all introduce yourselves? This is Niels R.Y., a.k.a. Fragile, which is French, I believe. <laughs> this is Shannon Smith, a.k.a. Something Claws, because, you know, everybody getting something. And yes, everybody yes. eats B. He's Ace Boogie Claws. <laughs> 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 Everyone eats B. Merry Christmas. I ain't eating. You ain't eating. What you mean you ain't eating? You ain't making this paper, man? Everybody eats, B. Christmas is a little different for people this year. Uh, a lot of things are going to have to change. But one thing that may not for a lot of people is uh, American Christmas tradition is like the, the the specials, the movies, the films that we watch during this time of year. And so today, tonight, we are going to talk about our top five Christmas movies, films, specials that we love to watch during this time of year so we're going to go over our top five list we're going to go from five to one um after we go over the list the other hosts will then comment on any any things in particular and then we'll go over our honorable mentions and once everyone goes over their list we'll then talk about those ones that were similar talk about some of those outliers like why are they there um but yeah we're excited to talk about the list now, mind you, Mark said first and foremost that we're accepting everyone and, you know, regardless of what you celebrate, how you celebrate it, tis the season to be jolly. Um, and so there really isn't a clear cut definition on what a Christmas movie is. Um, it's like what connotates a Christmas movie? And we know there's like been debates uh, for several movies, some that will be on the list. Um, but this is going to be our own definition of what we consider a Christmas movie um, and movies that may not necessarily be about Christmas, but got some type of Christmas thing in it. So with hey, that, fellas, let me ask you something real quick and, and then we'll get into the list. But just to give a little clarity about how I went about my list, my list is what I have to watch during this time of year, not necessarily what I think is the best. You know what I'm saying? What is an American classic, whatever. But these are my top five is like, it does not feel like Christmas unless I watch these films. Same. I looked at it the same way. Yep. All right. Shannon, did you say you wanted to go? Yep. Going right on up. Batman Returns. Uh, Number five. Batman Returns. It is a Christmas movie. Uh, At me. Uh, So Batman Returns. 
then Best Man Holiday, Faith, Football, and Family in that order. Uh, I think he had it in a different order, but that's, but yeah, so sorry. Batman Returns, Best Man Holiday, The Family Stone, This Christmas, and coming in at number one, a newcomer, Jingle Jangle. So that's mine. <laughs> I love Shannon's list. The Shannon dog. <laughs> Shannon's Shannon's Christmas list is brought to you by BT and Sprite. <laughs> exactly. That is the blackest Christmas list ever. <laughs> Yo, yeah. how many times did uh Morris Chestnut make that list? <laughs> I need to look at the roster of some of these movies. Shannon, I love your list, dog. Like it is. It is the blackest Christmas, blackity black. I love it. I love it's unapologetically black. I love it, man. It is, as you mentioned, brought to you by <laughs> by Sprite with Sprite, Hennessy, and uh, I don't, I don't know, whatever else we have, <laughs> whatever else, uh, whatever commercials play during the NBA Finals. That's what brought yeah. to you by yeah. <laughs> Shannon's list. Is this Christmas the? Is that the one Chris Brown's in? Uh, well, we do want to clarify, innocent Chris Brown. Innocent. Ben, ben th- that was before that all the stuff went down. So that was that's when it was adorable for him to be singing a Donny Hathaway song, and uh-huh. not like, how dare you sing a Donny Hathaway song? <laughs> yeah. So honorable mention. Uh, so as wild as it is, usually this is like, oh, it's a classic. It's a classic. But uh, I have Elf. Uh, so as honorable mentions, I have Elf, Home Alone. And Friday after next, uh, and and I do have to laugh because the reason I have Friday after next is because like I've seen it a couple of times and it's and it's funny, but I've actually never seen a clear copy of it. Every time I saw it, it was bootleg. So, <laughs> so if I see a clear copy of it, it might be able to move up on the list. If if Shannon's list couldn't get any blacker, <laughs> a bootleg movie, a bootleg <laughs> copy of, of and, and, and honestly, he's like, no, it's got to be bootleg though. He's like, I just can't <laughs> bootleg <laughs> Friday <laughs> after next. Um, you don't even know that. what Friday. At, he technically don't know what Friday after next is because he's yeah. only seen bootlegs. You you get you get like a 4K remastered version of Friday after next one. Shannon, he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right, so my list, um, number five, this is going to be shocking, but number five is Jingle Jangle. Um, I'll, I'll just go over the list. I was about to start commenting. Let me calm down. Number five, Jingle Jangle. Number four, Die Hard. Yes, it's a Christmas movie. Number three, A Christmas Story. Number two, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original 1966 cartoon. And then number one, my number one, like I this embodies Christmas to me is Home Alone. It, it ain't Christmas unless I'm sitting down watching how uh, Kevin McAllister is slowly torturing um, some white burglars. So yes, Home Alone. No, you, your honorable mentions. Yes, all the black movies that uh, Shannon mentioned. <laughs> but in all addition, but in addition to that, I also had Batman Returns on my. Uh, I had Batman Returns on my honorable mention. Love Actually, which is a Christmas movie, like one of the Husso movies. If y'all ever listened to that episode, Scrooged, which is like the uh, Bill Murray uh, retake on the A Christmas Carol, uh, Elf. The only reason Elf didn't make my top five is because I've never seen Elf from beginning to end. Like, I've always seen clips of Elf, and it's always been hilarious. But I think if I've seen Elf from beginning to end, it would probably make my my top five list. Um, And then, of course, last but not least, and it didn't make it by hair, Gremlins. If it wasn't for Jingle Jangle being so dope, Gremlins would have made my top five. So, uh, all right, gentlemen, I'll go. At number five, full disclosure, my lists are a lot wider than y'all's. But uh, <laughs> at number five, I got the Rankin Bass Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. At number four, I got Die Hard. Number three is Gremlins. Number two is Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. And my number one is It's a Wonderful Life. Honorable mentions, I got at six, I got um, Rankin Bass, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And then number seven, I got Preacher's Wife. Ah, yes. Um, eight, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original. 
Um, nine, I got uh, Christmas Story, and ten, I got Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown Christmas. I'm glad it made the list. I'm glad it made the list. No one put Ten Commandments. Are we considering that a Thanksgiving movie? Uh, that's a that's a, a, a Easter movie. Uh, the Ten mm-hmm. Commandments can make it anytime. It's is the season. <laughs> Look, I, I have a I have a long running history with that movie because that's when I knew Spring Break was over. <laughs> when Ten Commandments came on TV, <laughs> I knew that Spring Break was over, and I had to go to school the next day. So <laughs> that is funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is funny. Oh my god! <laughs> you're like it's like bittersweet because you're like ah. Charleston Heston in his newly revision colored in um, glory. And then you're like, oh, but yeah. I holidays saw tomorrow. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what other movies didn't make it from our list? I'm trying to think. Movies that didn't make it. Let's see. Hold on. Shazam, and, which is technically a Christmas movie. That is technically a uh, Christmas movie. Yep, forgot about that. Oh, Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. So yeah. what what are those group of of uh, anima animation called Mark? It's the it's the studio. I think the studio is called Rankin Bass. Yeah, I all those gave me nightmares. Really? I'm gonna just keep it a buck with you, Mark. I I don't do well with whatever that claymation animation is. Like Rudolph was cool, Frosty was okay, but that Santa Claus scared the crap out of me. Like that just that thing, nah, I'm not cool with it. I'm not cool with it at all. I don't know. No, I feel you. The uh the abominable snowman. Oh yeah. Yeah. Scared yeah, me as a kid. And then and then Homeboy is straight up crazy in that movie, Yukon Cornelius. The 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 dude that they find, he's like he's like, I'll take the snowman down. Yahoo! And he just he just fights the snowman. The name's Yukon Cornelius, the greatest prospector in the north. This is my land, and you know, it's rich with gold. Gold! Gold and silver! Silver and gold! Wahoo! I'm Crazy not white guy, and they just <laughs> fight the, the fight the snowman. So to recap. Shannon's list, number five, Batman Returns. Number four, Best Man Holiday. Number three, Family Stone. Number two, This Christmas. And number one, Jingle Jangle. What's Family Stone? So Family Stone is a, is a great movie. Uh, I will say it may have been even ahead of its time. Like it was made in 05. Uh, it had Sarah Jessica Parker, Rachel McAdams, Diane Keaton, Luke, we- uh, Luke Wilson, and so it was about this family. Uh, I forgot how many kids there were, uh, but they were like they're all adults at this point. Uh, this family they come back together for Christmas, and they all have just these wild things going on. Of like this dude is about to marry someone who's not really right for him. She later ends up marrying his brother anyway, and it, they got all these issues, issues and everything. Uh, the reason I say it may have even been ahead of its time. I mean, it was oh five, so it wasn't. I mean, super long ago, but. Uh, like they had a they had a gay interracial slash interability couple, which I'm like, yo, I have not seen that. It's got a, I don't know, uh, would we say a double entendre, maybe triple entendre of like what stone means? And I was like, even like that's pretty deep because their last name was the the last name of the family was Stone. The movie's called A Family Stone. Last name of the family was Stone. Uh, it sort of revolved around this ring. So like the actual, like the stone, the rock, it was I don't know, like a diamond ring or something uh, that one of the, one of the, uh, the sons, he was like, mom, I want your ring. So I'm going to give it to the woman I'm going to propose to. Uh, and then the mom was just a solid person. So she was like the stone of the family. I was like, look at y'all with a triple entendre, maybe quadruple. Cause I probably missed one <laughs> it's in there. That sounds about right. Yeah, that that is it's a that's a dope movie. Thank you for adding yeah. it on the list. Um, to recap, mine's number five: Jingle Jangle. Four: Die Hard. Three: A Christmas Story. Two: How a Grinch Stole Christmas. And one: Home Alone. And then Mark's list: five: Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Four: Die Hard. Three: Gremlins. Two: Home Alone. Two: Lost in New York. And then number one: It's a Wonderful Life. So the movies that have made our list in some way, shape, or form, Jingle Jangle, Die Hard, 
I think I think we can consider Home Alone. Then all y'all, even though it's this, I put the sequel. I think we can talk about, you know, Home Alone because we all kind of put it on there. And uh, and 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 I'll admit, Home Alone Two is just a, a carbon copy of Home Alone One. It just it just takes place in New York. Was there <laughs> Mark? Was there a reason in particular that you picked Home Alone Two instead of Home Alone? So, um. My dad took me to see this movie. I saw I saw Home Alone one. I saw it. Uh, was it I think Tim on Curry? Video. Was Tim Curry enough for yo, you? Yo, so I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna get to that right. <laughs> so first, I just got the memory of going to see this movie with my dad. You know, um, and then I've always wanted a, a Christmas in New York. I don't know, it's like cheesy. I, that's something I've always wanted is to have to have Christmas in New York. Um, but uh, Tim Curry is the funniest part in this movie, and I like it was like we said like this movie is a copy like they took the script that it must have took thirty minutes to write this movie because they basically took the Home Alone one script and they just put like New York, New York, New Hotel, New York <laughs> like like because all the same jokes happen and um but I'll, I'll go on a limb man I think I think this one's funnier. Than the first one, I think the 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 jokes are funnier. Um, the hotel scene cracks me up where uh, he's playing in a movie and he's like, "You've been sleeping around with everyone, Mike, Mo, Cliff," and it go, it cuts to the the doorman and his name's Cliff and he's like, "It's not true." Don't give me that. You've been spooching with everybody, Snuffy, Al, Leo, Little Mo with the gimpy leg, Cheeks, Bony Bob, Cliff. <gasps> It's a lie. I could go on forever, baby. <laughs> Every time that cracks me up. And then a gag that always gets me, no matter how many times I see this movie, is when Marv grabs the the um the faucets that Kevin made uh electrified and he turns into the skeleton and he's He's doing that Marv scream, that high pitch scream. <laughs> like every time, no, I've seen this movie over thirty times, and like every time I see that scene, I I die laughing. But um, yeah, I will only just- say two things about Home Alone two. Then then that's like in in contrast to Home Alone one. Tim Curry is hilarious. Yeah, like Tim Curry kills it. Like John Candy is funny as like an actor, but Tim Curry was hilarious in Home Alone two. Um. And like Kevin was out there trying to kill him in Home Alone too. Like Home Alone one, he was like, "Get out of my house." But Home Alone two is like, "I'm gonna kill y'all. <laughs> like I'm gonna find this house and I'm gonna set it up to kill y'all." So. Yo, so a funny, funny thing with with our kids. So I was just flipping through channels. I had Cozy next to me, and Home Alone two was on, and it's right when they're breaking into the house. So I'm like, "All right, it's a Christmas movie." Whatever, it's PG. I'll, I'll leave it on. So it's when um, Harry Harry breaks into the back and his head catches on fire, right? And Kosi <laughs> Kosi goes, "Oh no, Daddy! He's on fire! He's burning! He's burning!" Right? <laughs> and so and so I quickly I'm like oh no so I quickly turn right I quickly turn oh, and I'm, I'm like I'm like trying to find something else to watch and I'm turning and she goes no daddy let's keep watching <laughs> <laughs> why she want to see them burn Mark she's like he's burning he's burning he's bur- <laughs> look at him being punished dad that's that's what you get for taking money from children <laughs> slowly <laughs> oh my goodness <gasps> so anyways home alone is a classic um yeah. like the, there is one other thing about home alone that i wanted to talk to y'all about yeah you know, if this family was black. This wasn't really a happen. Think about this. Kevin was the youngest in the family. So Kevin was the baby. I don't know a black mother who just doesn't constantly think about her baby. Like the mm-hmm. baby in the family and like where they are, what they're doing. Like, I just don't think that would have slit. Like, it wouldn't have happened like that. Because if, if she wasn't in charge of Kevin, 
Then one of them older kids were in charge of Kevin. And the 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 fear of death that she would have bestowed on that older child to make sure Kevin was there, they would have stopped whatever caravan they were and was like, nah, Kevin ain't here. Now we got to go back. Because hey, of the mm-hmm. fear. And so, nah, I don't... I don't hey, know if it would have went down like that. Yo, yo, you are onto something, man. Because, like, first of all, it was a black family. Where, where they go in the first movie? They went to, like, France or something? I don't know. Like, I don't know. The, the black families I know are not flying overseas during Christmas. Like, nah, man. We going to grandma's house or papa's mm-hmm. house or, you know, I ain't, that, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to enjoy my 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 day and a half or whatever my two days off for Christmas. So mm-hmm. hell no, we ain't flying overseas during Christmas. But you're absolutely yeah. right with the sibling thing. If it was a black family and say this did go down like that, Home Alone would be about two kids, Kevin and the older brother would be whooping his ass because he knew he's gonna get his ass whooped when the parents got home. <laughs> Yeah, the mom would have been like, oh, go get Kevin. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. Older, so instead of the mom <laughs> coming all the way back, <laughs> that older sibling would have been going all the way back. Let, let me ask y'all, why did y'all pick one over two? The, one was the definition of Christmas for me. Like, one is... Okay, here's, here's, there is a specific scene that gets me every time. It got me in 1990. It gets me in 2020. It is at the end when the old man, the next door neighbor, when his family shows up and you just see this dude, his nose is red because he's been cold, but like you see everything around him is like red. He is so filled with emotion and joy. And Kevin just looks at him and nods and says like, yeah, dude, you deserve it. Like that is Christmas to me. Like that, that little moment right there captures Christmas to me. So like, that's why it's my number one. Um, and again, Kevin torturing folks, like those yeah. two things is why it's number one. So like, yeah, I think I didn't really see a moment like that. And, um, you know, like, I don't know if the pigeon lady gets a redemption in home alone too. I don't remember, <laughs> but Kevin, run. No, no, you know, <laughs> yeah. what? I feel you. Cause the moment for me, I have that kind of, this is Christmas moment in part two. And it's not even a big moment. There, there's, there's a song on the score. That plays right when Kevin, when he when he runs away from the hotel and he visits the pigeon lady and he sees that other kid uh, in the children's hospital and he waves to him. There's there's a song that's playing. I don't know what it's called, um, but it's like this this chorus of kids singing. It's this about Christmas and like that song. Like since this day is like that's Christmas in my mind. Like just the the feeling of that song. <laughs> song really stuck with me so I, I definitely get what you mean like it, it conjures up those feelings about Christmas sort of that, that similar thing of uh, I think Neil's mentioned it earlier where yeah I don't I don't know if I've seen Home Alone 2 from beginning to end I think every time I've, I've ever seen any of it it's always been like I jump in at some point watch some of it and then like something happens and you know so I, I think I've seen it but not from beginning to end in one sitting uh, and, and yeah with one uh, like I said, one is just, yeah, it's just a, uh, just the, the classic, it set the tone because two was like the, sort of the, the copy of that just in New York. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. So definitely one had the, uh, and the, the redemption arc of, of the, uh, I guess the, the old guy as well. Uh, and then looking back, looking back though, I mean, whether, which, whichever one we look at it, um, uh, there was something I was looking at that was showing like these are the the actual injuries that the uh, what are they, the wet bandits? <laughs> these are the actual injuries that they would have sustained. And I'm like, like Kevin was a murderer. Like, like oh, yeah. whether part one or two, I think he got more vicious than two. But it's like still like, bro, you you didn't hurt anybody. You you killed them. Like uh, he was yeah. uh, he was he was going for heads. He yeah, was like, he was <laughs> saw. This was saw. This is the people who saw. Like yes. Like, no, it's good. Shane, I've seen, I've seen like a video like that where a doctor reviews Home Alone and like I don't even think they get in the house um, if it was real. But for our listeners, this movie was huge. 
Macaulay Culkin was a household name because of this movie. Um, it was everywhere. It, it became an instant Christmas classic as soon as it came out. And I, th- I forgot. I, I looked no, Mark, up. hold on, Mark. No lie. This movie became a Christmas classic as soon as it came out. Kind of like Jingle Jangle, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you if you account for inflation, I forgot. But this movie makes like crazy money if you account for inflation. I think I saw like a special on it. It like made like Star Wars type money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was it was it was everywhere. Um and then my last thing I want to say about Home Alone, my dad, like if, if someone was like, yo, you can only show your dad one scene and, and he better laugh or we you know, we're taking you out in the desert or something, dog, I would show him the clip of Home Alone one when the the spider it, when Kevin puts the spider on Mars face and he's screaming, my dad loses it every time he sees that clip. <laughs> every time he loses it. So next, let's talk about Jingle Jangle. Um, Shannon, you had it as your number one. I had it as my number five. So I'll, I'll go real quick and then Shannon, you can bring it home. Yo, um, hey, hey, fellas, can I, can I, because I've not seen Jingle Jangle yet. I um apparently y'all both put on your list, so I will definitely watch it with the family. So if you could try to make this as non spoiler as you possibly can. Okay, I will make it as non spoiler as possible. Um okay. I appreciate that. So the first five minutes is all you need to see to know why this made the list. <laughs> watch mm-hmm. the first maybe five to ten. I may I may Watch the first five to my okay. I'll tell you this, Mark. My sister, she was like, I watched it. Like I saw, like you know, like twenty minutes of it, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. But she's like, but I missed the first ten minutes. I was like, you ain't watch Jingle Jangle. <laughs> I was like, you ain't watch Jingle Jangle. That's what makes it dope. <laughs> uh-huh. So, so watch watch the first five to ten minutes. And you will you will greatly appreciate it. Like to me, the acting is great, the music is great. It's black excellence all throughout the movie. Um, the story is just really, really good. It's one of those stories that like you know your kids gonna love it, and you want your kids to see it all the time. But it's also like great. Like it's like something that you can enjoy too. Forrest Whitaker brings it. Um, but like everyone, like for actually Forrest Whitaker is Forrest Whitaker is Forrest Whitaker. You know what to expect from Forrest Whitaker. The man is like Hall of Fame. Everyone else comes to Forrest Whitaker's level. Mm-hmm. That's how good it is. Like every like Forrest Whitaker is okay. He's like mediocre. Everybody else acts on par or better than Forrest Whitaker. So that's 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 my spoiler free thing. <laughs> and the reason I put this on here is like. I foresee from now going forward, Jingle Jangle is on my Christmas rotation. Like I will, it will need, I will need to watch Jingle Jangle during Christmas time. Like I just see that happening. Is it, is it like what, what really, I know you said like the first like five, 10 minutes. Is it, is it like, cause sometimes you watch something that's Christmas and it's like, it's the music, it's the, just maybe the time period the movie was made in like what what is it about this that like you're like this is it this is on my christmas list rotation yes all those That's things answer. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all those things you said <laughs> so the soundtrack's bomb is what i'm what i'm hearing all right yeah yes yeah. yes okay and shannon good luck trying to yeah yeah so i'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna leave a lot of stuff out but uh for all the reasons neil's mentioned the yeah the whole culture of it it was just it it was just great it was a feel it didn't feel like hey look we're we're trying to show you we're trying to show you that people are black or they're not or that you know it was just like boom like you look how you look and they did it um and one of the thing and then you know unquestionably black i mean this this isn't a spoiler like the uh, uh forrest whitaker's name you know it's it's last name is jango first name is geronicus you were you were not going to get <laughs> you were not going to get Chris Evans or somebody to play that. <laughs> His name is Geronicus. Uh and then uh, another reason uh this is and this isn't, you know, spoilery either, but it's like 
I think you're going to see a lot of probably black kids being like, uh, oh, I want to be an inventor or do something with math and physics and science. Uh, and I'm like, I feel like the way that it is just going to sort of in, encourage and, and, and things like that for, for especially uh, young, you know, young black kids to want to engage in things like that is, is that's just, that just speaks volumes. Damn. All right. I gotta watch this movie ASAP. Let me, let me ask y'all this. If your top five was a top four, what movie would you remove to put Jingle Jangle on your list? Oh, well, for me, it's already number one. So I would know what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if so, if you, yeah, if you took my single jingle, so you got those four remaining movies and you wanted to put Jingle Jangle on that list, what oh, movie's coming off that list? Oh, I mean, I'm probably taking off uh, Best Man Holiday. Wait, yeah, did I do that right? Yeah, you did it right. <laughs> Believe it or not, I might take off Die Hard. Ooh, I might take off Die Hard. Nails. Okay, all right. It probably realistically is is sorry to be honest. And what it's going to be replacing is a Christmas story. So I probably it's probably replacing a Christmas story. Like I can foresee this playing like twenty four hour marathon on TNT or TBS. Like this, that's the type of movie this is. Like it could be on all day long. It in the R Y household, it has been on all day long. So yeah, I can see that. And. And I, I don't know. Uh, so I hadn't done the rest of the, the research like uh, about the director and, and it coming together and everything. But I saw something and correct me if I'm wrong. So I don't know if y'all had looked at it, but it's like it took at least about 10 years for this to happen. It was like like it had been like, I, I guess maybe the story had been made and everything like that, but it hadn't been picked up by anybody. The person had been turned down and this and that. And then now it finally got picked up. Uh, but it, it, it was, it was like a long time in the making to my understanding. Uh, like, you know, maybe not literally the filming, but like it being a script and a story made, uh, before someone picked it up, like turned down multiple times and just sort of set collecting dust. That's wild. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's what's up. Good for them. Good, good. All right. Hey, it's on my list, man. It's in my queue. I put it in my, my, uh, Netflix list as you guys are talking. So I'm I'm excited to watch it. So next, um, we'll talk about Gremlins. Um, what's what's to talk about Gremlins that hasn't been said already? What a wholesome Christmas movie um, about evil demonic uh, Chinese animals that chi- ancient Chinese animals that um, have the most arduous way to like keep them alive um, <laughs> or to have your entire town run amok. Um, by intelligent rodents. Um, great movie, <laughs> great yeah. wholesome Christmas yeah. movie. It, this this movie is the reason why that we have a PG thirteen rating. Because when it came out, it, well, this movie and I think Temple of Doom were the reason why there's a PG thirteen. So it used to just be G P G R, <laughs> right? And this movie came out in Temple of Doom, and parents were like, yo, what the hell? You chopping off little monsters' heads and throwing old ladies out windows and <laughs> like so the the M, what is it the MMPA they they created the PG thirteen rating to to satisfy those those Karens back in the eighties but um yeah man dog this this movie it, it it shouldn't be a Christmas movie but I cannot go without watching Grim- Gremlins on, around Christmas. I just can't do it. It's such a Christmas movie to me that if I watch it in the summertime, I'm kind of like, well, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, Mark, that makes so much sense, brother. You don't even got to, ex- I know that's hard to explain, but that mm-hmm. makes so much sense. And the only thing I'll say about um, Gremlins is before we had Pikachu, we had Gizmo. Like I know Furby is a thing, man, and I don't know what Furby's are based off of, but every Furby I've ever seen looks like Gizmo to me. Like Gizmo was the thing before any of all this stuff came through. Yeah, he was. He was definitely everywhere. Um, yeah, the the I, I I saw this movie 
during my Christmas break in the in the I actually saw Gremlins two before I saw Gremlins one, but I was too scared to finish Gremlins two. I saw like Gremlins two when I was probably like six years old, and I turned it off real quick. So then, like in the third, fourth grade during holiday break, it was I was watching TNT, and um, I watched the whole thing through, and I was petrified, but like I I loved it, dog. I loved it so much that I went to my my school library. Um, when I got back to school and there was like, you remember when they had like the books when movies would come out, but it was like, it was, it was, it was, it was the novelization, but it would have like, kind of like pictures from the movie. And I, I, I borrowed the gremlins one and I never gave it back. I never returned it. And like, I love like dog, the gremlins terrified me, but like on the, I, I kind of wanted to hang out with them too. You were watching it wrong, bro. They were evil. <laughs> they were evil. I wanted to hang out with one of them. <laughs> the rest of them all needed to burn and be buried under the church. Like they were some demonic little beings. Fun to watch, but not mm-hmm. fun to be around. When they're in the bar and the ones dancing are like super madness and they're playing poker. Dog, it- like I said, they look fun to watch. <laughs> Like, I would love to watch the Gremlins. I don't want to be near the Gremlins. What you talking about? Did you not see that town, Mark? Were you not watching the movie I was watching? That town was ran amok, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, no. Well, yeah, they, they, they would not rock. They would not rock with us. Like, just when we say, like, yo, y'all are hilarious. Yeah, they don't want to like, be our friends. There are <laughs> enough of them to be their own friends. They don't want to be friends with us. But uh, uh, no, that's true. That's true. But yo, if y'all ever get a chance, like, really dive into like the history of this movie and like the over the years, it's gotten a lot of controversy. One, like the Asian stereotypes, but like people, people say it's an allegory for like white flight, right? Because when you think about it, it's like, well, first of all, first of all, when the movie came out, there's a lot of um. Um, a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not anger, but when people get hyped about shit and they get mad, uh, gremlins do a lot of like stereotypical black stuff in the movie, you know, like they're break dancing, uh, listen to jazz music. Um, they do a lot of stereotypical black stuff in the movie. And over the years, there's like, it's an allegory for white flight because it's the suburban, like slice of Americana town. And then, like, this foreign invasion comes into the town and runs it amok. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of, like, like gremlin essays now. And they're all very interesting. But, um, like, the... All I got to say is, if white people see us the way that I saw the gremlins, I understand racism. <laughs> I understand it. <laughs> Cause if they see us like that, that town was ran amok, brother. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out too. <laughs> I get it. I get it now. It, it's pretty interesting, man. Over the years of like what, like, and as we talked about this, um, with the Matrix and like what the Matrix has turned into. So it, it's just fascinating what that happens to film over time. But um, I still love this movie, man. The puppetry is great. Like it's some of the best I think puppetry in all like film history, um, classic. Got to watch it every Christmas. Apparently, there's gonna be a part three. Very excited, but you know I don't want to take too much time. But yeah, and Gremlins dog, and that the- that theme song. Oh, this movie made me afraid of the "Do You Hear What I Hear" song. If that song plays and I'm alone, I I, I gotta change it. Like like because that's that's the song that that plays right before the mom gets attacked by all the gremlins. But um, but the gremlin theme song used to put like chills down my spine as a kid. Man, it's just a very creepy, iconic theme song. Die Hard. So, and, and the Die Hard is a controversial one. 
Um, y'all probably remember Hans Gruber and the Nakatomi Plaza, uh, where um, what's what's uh, what's the dude's John McClane was trying to get back with his lady. All he was trying to do was get back with his lady on Christmas Eve, and she was out here working. And uh, I don't know much about the Nagatomi Plaza, the Nagatomi Corporation. All I know is that Hans Gruber or Professor Snape, whichever one that you want to call the brother, um, wanted all that they got over there. And if it wasn't for Carl Winslow and John McCain, <laughs> Christmas would not have come um, to that. What was it? Was it uh, L.A.? Yeah, this is when it came to L.A. Let's go down um, to the coast. Have some, yeah. So, I mean, what to say about Die Hard? Die Hard is one of the greatest action movies of all time. Um, it is just a great, great movie. It's entertaining. Bruce Willis, he probably hasn't really done this again, to be honest with you. But Bruce Willis, besides the other Die Hard movies, he, like, combines, like, like he's not charismatic, but he is charismatic. He's funny but like he's scared and like he is legit courageous and all at the same time. It is like, yeah. it's like, uh, it's an amazing uh, main character in an action movie that you don't really see. Cause there's like humility. Um, but the awesomeness all at the same time. Yeah. Um, you, no, it embodies no. Christmas. I should say. You're absolutely right. Like this, this movie changed action movies. Because, like you said, John John um, McClane, he before this it was like you had your Stallones and your Schwarzeneggers, and it was like your action movies was like a big dude with a gun who was unbeatable, and like John McClane was getting tore up. He was getting like bruised, battered. He was not a superhero or not a superhero. He wasn't like a super soldier or a super cop. He was a regular cop who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he was the only person that could do anything about it. The whole dog, the the whole movie, he's just trying to get other cops in the building to, to, to help him. Help the me. whole movie, yeah. Help it's like me. I cannot, I cannot do this. Somebody, help me, please. No, why aren't y'all in here? It's not until they kidnap his wife that he starts like, all right, all right. Well, I'm, I guess I got to say today, the whole movie, he's trying to get Carl Winslow's attention. He's trying to get the FBI. He's like, yo, just get in the building. Just get in here. <laughs> Big facts. He was not trying to do anything. He was like, yo, I just want my lady. I ain't coming for all this. <laughs> but you know what? They pissed him off. That's that's part of it. They pissed him off. They started coming at him in particular. And I bet Hans Gruber to this day, I know he's probably, you know, roasting in hell. But Hans Gruber is like, yo, how did I let this washed up cop knock down my like amazing plan? I'm sure Hans Gruber was playing that sucker for like a year, maybe more. Like he was an m- evil genius, and he got everything tore up because John McClane like felt some type yeah. of way. Like that's got to be humbling. And like at the end, he like dog Bruce Bruce Willis at the beginning of this movie, and then at the he looks like garbage. He looks like he he was in a or a tornado that was full of bricks and blood. Like, <laughs> like he don't come out looking like like a like a like a big like like Arnold or or Stallone. He looks like he's about to die at the end of this movie. <laughs> Which is like that's that's how you would expect it to be. Like if that were to happen, like yeah, you're not gonna come out like my mu- my muscles are still huge, and I'm like <laughs> you know, and 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 at worst I got a couple scratches and some dirt. He's like he's like, bro, I am not going. What is it? It's well, it's Tuesday. I'm not gonna make it to Wednesday. Like that's what. <laughs> but Carl was so proud of him, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Carl yeah. almost gave him the rock clap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then dog, uh, his 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 um his story. Even Carl Carl Winslow's little side story is like, you know, it's just dark at night, and I didn't, I couldn't see. <laughs> like I'm like, damn, Winslow, come on, man. <laughs> Yo, it, 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 it did his job, though. <laughs> it got John McClane through the end, man. No, Give it up to Carl Winslow. Let me, Underappreciated let me, hero in this movie. Why, no, why do you consider this a Christmas classic? 
Um, well, it was Christmas Eve. I saw Christmas trees. Um, and he was trying to get back with his lady. Like, I mean, like, I felt like it was tis, it was a classic story of tis the season. Like, this could have been almost Christmas. It just so happens that they're all white. And, like, instead of, like, him just rekindling at the holiday party, Hans Gruber showed up and messed everything up. Like, Hans Gruber is legit an evil villain because, like, that would have just been a love story. Yeah, um, for me, it's a, it, it's a couple of reasons. It's, it's the end, but for some reason, when they open up the bank vault and Ode to Joy comes on. Now, now, talk to me. What's going on here? Ask the FBI. They got the universal terrorist playbook, and they're running it step by step. It's going to go. It's going to go. Like that, that, that's just like, I don't know. Like I, I, that's one of those, I got to see this around Christmas. Um, such a great scene. Um, quick little fact about this movie. The, the internet will correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that this movie was based off of a book that was going to be a movie for Frank Sinatra. It just, it, this movie spawned. Two of the greatest movie sequels. I mean, we all t- we all know what the greatest Die Hard movie is. It's Die Hard with a Vengeance, but the the second movie is actually a Christmas movie as well. The Detective. Sorry, yes, you're right. It was Frank Sinatra, and it was okay. The Detective. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. But um, yeah, man, for me, it's a must watch. Uh, Shane, I don't know if you got any like. I know it was on your list, but if you got any yeah. thing you want to say about Die Hard. No, sad, sadly, I don't. Because, uh, yeah, because like, as we were going through it, I was like, yo, I haven't seen Die Hard in I don't know how many years. And I was like, I cannot remember all the things. But, but yeah, the, the only thing I would be like, yeah, the reason I would say Christmas movie is, I mean, the, the debate always comes up. And, yeah, I mean, there were Christmas trees. And, I mean, in, in most cases, that's all it takes for me. I'm like, okay, there's Christmas trees. Maybe it looks like July, but there are Christmas trees. So, so it's a Christmas movie if I want it to be. <laughs> All righty. So we have shared um, those that are similar and we're getting close to time. I think the last thing is just for us to like make a note about um, our number ones. Um, so we already talked about Shannon's number one, Jingle mm-hmm. Jangle. Shannon, anything you want to just like quickly comment on about Jingle Jangle? Why is your number uh, one? Nah, those those are all the pieces, and uh, and like I said, I think the the biggest piece for me, as, as great as everything was, uh, the longevity that this is gonna have, because it's as you mentioned, it's gonna continually be shown and shown in the future, meaning that we're just gonna have more and more generations of uh, of young young black kids wanting to be like scientists and inventors and stuff like that. So uh, I just I love that about it too. Yeah, man, here here. Uh, my number one is Home Alone for all the reasons. Um, and Mark, your number one was It's a Wonderful Life. Um, with the, uh, what, is, what is that dude's name? Who's the actor? I know, I always forget. Um, James Stewart, right? Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart, yeah. Jimmy Stewart. Whoa, oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have your money. It's in Frank's house and, and Carl's house. Oh, no, gee. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Mark, why is It's a Wonderful Life your number one Christmas movie of all? Besides Jimmy Stewart being Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Moon up. In, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Are you with the moon? Go around the moon and I'll bring it down to you. What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. I'll take it. You're an old hog, Mr. Potterson. That's what you are. <laughs> one, one, just for this reason, I love, like, old-timey, like, 
that vaudevillian talk. Like I, I like I wish that's how we talk today. Well, well, say fellas, get on the podcast and I'll hit your email. Skedaddle. Like I just, like, I can't, I can't get enough of that shit, dog. I really wish people talk. Like I'm like, yo, did y'all really talk like this? Is this how business got done back in the day? <laughs> Were they also that sinister too? <laughs> like I'm a, I'm gonna evict this coworker on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because Mr. Potter in that movie is like, and you know what's funny? It's it's such a for back in that day, it's really relevant now. It's a kind of anti-capitalist movie, but funny thing is, Mr. Potter gets no comeuppance in that movie. He George um, does his little thing, and he's like, "Merry Christmas," and he's like, "Yeah, in prison." But like, you don't see anything bad happen to Mr. Potter at the end of that movie. But um. But yeah, man, what what can I say about this movie? It is it is like the staple Christmas classic. This I don't know how many Christmas movies I've watched that they were watching this movie in the movie. You know what I mean? Um it's just such a like such a great story. You know, um for those who haven't seen it, the main character, he just has this like very like <laughs> wonderful life that he doesn't realize is great and while he's valuable. And it comes around Christmas time. He's given up on his dream so much for his family, his town, his brother, constantly giving up his dreams. And like the movie, like beats you into it. Like, like, like the movie's like a three hour movie or two and a half hour movie. And it seems like the first hour, like crushing the main character's dreams from like, he graduates high school to um, he's married with kids. I, I first saw this movie in its entirety well, this was one of those movies that, like, I would always see clips of, you know, and I always see references to. But I finally saw it for, like, the first time in its entirety when I was, like, 12 or 11. And I've watched it every Christmas since then. And I've never been able to, like, not tear up at the end. Like, I've seen this movie for, like, 20 years going now. And I'm ne- I am I can never make it out unmissy eyed Um... It's just, it's just one of those like heartfelt movies. It will make you feel good at the end. Um, seeing it is one of my favorite movies. Um, very simple story, but told very well and uh, directed really well for you know the time and when it happened. But yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Carried on the back of Jimmy Stewart. Any uh, last things from folks as we uh, close the episode? Yo, can I can I ask y'all real quick what um what of your honorable mentions do y'all wish was more celebrated? I don't think I got one. All's minds is, is really celebrated pretty high. Um Scrooge I don't think gets enough love as it used to back in the day. I agree with you on that. Scrooge was a, is that that was like that was my It's a Wonderful Life <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> like, I really loved that movie. It was freaky, but I really, like, that was the definition of a Christmas yeah. carol to me. For it's very a 80s. Long time. It's very 80s, and I think, like, people grew out of that. Maybe that's why. But no, I, I feel you. Yeah, so, uh, and this is one, so it was one of my honorable mentions, but I was like, oh, I'm, I'm only going to do, like, like, three honorable mentions. So I hadn't actually said this one, but, but it's on the honorable mention. Uh, it's pretty new, but it's called Happiest Season, and uh, and and so that's one that I hope gets a little more. Uh, and, and I mean, and it's pretty new; like it just came out like maybe last year or something, uh, or maybe just this year. But uh, anyway, in in the in the movie, it's it's this family. They want to be perfect, and they're all about appearances, and and want to have the perfect, uh, you know, the perfect family, the perfect celebration. And uh, one of the things it is a uh, there's there's a lesbian couple. And so one of basically one of them, she's out when they live in, say, like New York. But then when she comes back to her family back home, she's like, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, this is my roommate and my best friend and this and that. And so it's probably one of the few movies that in the end, uh, you know, like she they. They end up they 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 are together and and they go for it, but it's probably one of the few movies when you're like that's supposed to be the happy ending. But I'm like, no, I wish you would have dumped, uh, you know, I, or I wish you would have gotten dumped. <laughs> so, but the reason I say like I hope it gets more play is like it is a Christmas movie, and 
and it's just a, it's just such a a real life thing, you know, where like if someone's coming out, like maybe they're out here, but they're not there, and and just like in real life, like it's not always the happy ending because it was a happy ending for them, but looking from the outside, you know, I guess from the outside in, I'm like, no, I really wish you would have chose another person, <laughs> like because I don't like the person who who is your happy ending. So, and that's I always I always wonder when folks do the like the guess who's coming to dinner, but for, like for the holidays, I'm yeah. like, yo, you really setting up your partner, like, you, yeah, like, man, you can't you really do that setting up Christmas. your partner for something like that. I guess this person went the like the cowardly way out, like, oh no, I'm not gonna tell them that I'm gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're my roommate, like that's jacked up. Like, but, like yeah. the, the, the guess room, who's coming man. to dinner stuff for the holidays. Nah, like you, you, <laughs> you gotta, gotta make you, a random time to like let your family know what's really, really good. You gotta set your your partner up for success, man, and like you, you it's all that's what you're doing. You like are like like here. You are going to help me do all this stuff to the family, and like you're gonna get the brunt of it. And you don't know none of them like that. Like that's 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 cold yeah. blooded. And you know, you oh, know, if it's an old family, they're like, thanks for ruining Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I think that line was said in there. <laughs> I think it was said. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> you ruined Christmas. <laughs> See, you can't ruin a Tuesday. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, come on a regular. They weren't going to say, thanks for ruining Tuesday. Like, come do on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, man. So, r- real quick, my, my um, honorable mentions that I wish got more play is the preacher's wife if yeah solely i don't think i've ever seen a happy-go-lucky denzel in anything usually denzel is kicking ass and taking names and everything that he's in even if he's not killing people but (laughs) but whitney houston kills the end of that movie her version version of joy to the world is probably the best version of joy to the world ever made there's no question about that that is joy to the world what 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 other joy to the world exists i don't know i don't think there are any other version <laughs> that's like um what's that uh, will, song that lauren hill did on sister act two uh, oh yeah. joyful joyful yeah mm-hmm. what what's the other one What's, what's the one before that? Do y'all, do y'all remember what it sounded like before Susan had to? I just remember Homeboy. Yo, Mary, yo, yeah, we rap. Mary had a little lamb. Who sweet is why the stuff. No, I was, like, I was like, wait a minute. That's a, you didn't make that up. That's a thing. And they're like, at the end, they're like, booyah, booyah. <laughs> That's what makes it original. <laughs> yeah. It was the 90s. But, you had to be there. <laughs> you had to yeah. be there. If you want to be somebody. If you want to go, oh man, we're going to have to do that movie. I want to watch Sister Act 2 now. Thanks, fella. <laughs> well, and, and, oh. and you'll get to see Sister Act 3. Thanks to, uh, th- <laughs> thanks to Disney. So. And Tyler Perry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Um, well, gentlemen, I enjoy talking to y'all about um, the lovely holidays um, in our top five list. And we didn't yell at each other like a previous episode that we did. Good for us. And, and no one ruined <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> no one ruined Christmas. Uh, thank you all for listening to uh, Pop Call Parent. We have a new episode every month or so. You can find us on all social media at Pop Call Parent. Uh, email us at popcallparent at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate us, review, and subscribe. Um, and as always, please join the cult. Peace. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, podcast. <laughs> And we're out. Well, gosh. <laughs> <laughs>